All right, so our video today is going to talk about unit 2.1, day 2, and this is the methods of graphing quadratics. So we found um, yesterday that one of our methods for graphing quadratics was using a t-chart and actually just plugging in values and generating a table of values to, you know, find ordered pairs. Um, but what we'll find out is that it's very inefficient and it doesn't really give us all information because in certain situations our graph won't behave the way that we want it to and won't be centered around the origin. And so what we're going to do today, our objective is to graph quadratic functions. We did using a table already, but then we're going to graph finding the vertex and the axis of symmetry. So the only difference of what we're going to use today is we're going to use the vertex and we're going to use the axis of symmetry a little bit more um, to find out some of the characteristics and kind of how it helps shape our graph a little bit um, easier so that we can, you know, go through this a little bit quicker. So the first thing that we're going to look at is kind of the form that we're going to be looking at the most, um, which will be what we call standard form. Uh, we recognize standard form, and we've kind of seen standard form before. And standard form is the ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, just this equation alone will give us a ton of information about the way the graph is shaped and the way the graph behaves. Now, most of us remember using, you know, this a, b, and c and talking about the shapes of graph when we did things like end behavior and we did whether it was, you know, up or down or anything like that. Um, and so we're going to use that stuff again when we look at the leading coefficient. So when we look at our leading coefficient, our leading coefficient will always be A. And, you know, really there's only two options for A to be. Um, so when A is greater than zero, that basically means that it's positive. And when A is less than zero, that means it's going to be negative. Um, and so what that's going to tell us is that's going to tell us whether our graph at the end, our end behavior is up, up, or down, and down. Now, what that really means for us in terms of one of the things that we've been learning um, is that it's either going to be a minimum or a maximum. And so when A is greater than zero, meaning that it's positive, that means that it's pointing up. And if I look at this example here, if I draw a parabola to go with this, if A is pointing up, then I'm going to have a minimum value. Now if A is pointing, or A is negative, that means my graph is pointing down. And if I just kind of make a curve with that, that means I'm going to have a maximum. And so the idea is that when it's positive, I'm going to have a minimum, and when it's negative, I'm going to have a maximum. Now, it seems weird because it's opposite from that. You would think that if it's positive, it would have a maximum, but realistically, you have to look at the way that it's pointing and the way that it's behaving. Um, and so those are the two differences there, is that we're either going to have a minimum or a maximum. Now, just like we kind of talked about yesterday, we have also a C, which is a constant term. Now that constant term is here at the end, um, and what that's going to be is that C is going to give us our y-intercept. And that will always be true, even with our form of mx plus b for our linear equations, this plus C at the end is going to give us our y-intercept. So our y-intercept is basically going to be the ordered pair, 0, zero comma C. And so whatever that value is, we can plug it in. If it's not there, that means it's zero, and our um, y-intercept is going to be at the origin. Now, the last thing that we would look at is from this, we can find our axis of symmetry. Now, finding the ac axis of symmetry is just a little bit more tricky, um, but we're going to use this formula right here. Um, and so our axis of symmetry was just a straight line, and we knew that it went through the vertex, but really all that we look at is x equals negative b over 2a. So we look at the b, and we look at the a, we take those coefficients, um, divide them with each other um, with multiplying a by 2, and then just take the opposite. So when I say the negative, if you divide those two values, or you divide this part of the fraction, and you get a negative value, just make it positive. If you end up with a positive, then you just make it negative. We'll see that in, in work, and we'll kind of go with that, but we can at least find our axis of symmetry from that formula. Now, the last thing is if we look at standard form, you know, obviously our vertex will tell us whether we have a minimum or maximum, um, and we can kind of figure that out from A. Um, but with that, we need an ordered pair for our vertex. And so we're going to use that same thing that we did with our axis of symmetry, knowing that when we have a parabola, we have our vertex right here, 
And with that vertex, that axis of symmetry goes right through the vertex. So that x coordinate of our vertex is going to be the same as our axis of symmetry. And so the idea behind that is what we can do is we can find the x value. So we can use this negative b over 2a and get a value of x. And so that will be our x coordinate of our vertex, but we still need a y coordinate. So what we're basically going to do is we're going to take this information and just plug it back into our formula. Now it seems like a lot because we have to go through all those steps, but we would have to go through those steps anyway if we were making a table of values. So here we're just using that vertex, we're finding this x value, plugging it in, and getting two values for our vertex, our x coordinate, and our y coordinate. The only thing is we just have to use and remember this negative b over 2a. So just make sure that we're remembering that the x coordinate of our vertex and for our axis of symmetry, we can find using this negative b over 2a. So negative b over 2a. That's what we're going to be focusing on today. And so what does that look like? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation um, and we're going to find our vertex, we're going to find our axis of symmetry, and we're going to find our y-intercept. Now, we need to understand that we need to state whether we're going to use a minimum or a maximum. We want to know that information. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find my coefficients of a, b, and c. So that's what I'm going to want to find first. So if I look at these coefficients, my coefficient of a is 1, my coefficient of b is negative 2, and c is negative 3. So right away, I know my y-intercept is the ordered pair 0, comma, negative 3. Now remember, with an intercept, one of those values is always 0. So that's why I always know that it's 0. So it's 0, negative 3. Now, first thing that I need to look at is that a is positive. So that means that my graph is going to look like this. It means it's going to go up. And so if I have my vertex, my vertex is going to be at the bottom here. So this is going to tell me that I'm going to have a minimum. So right away, we can just draw a very simple version of what our parabola is going to look like so that we can find if we're going to have a minimum or a maximum. And since A is positive, they're pointing up, and that gives us a minimum. So what we need to do now is we need to find our vertex, and we need to find our axis of symmetry. So the first thing that I'm going to use is I'm going to use x equals negative b over 2a. That's going to allow me to find my axis of symmetry, which will allow me to help find my vertex. So if I just use those coefficients, I have negative, negative 2 over 2 times 1. And if I simplify that, that would be a negative negative 2, so it would just be 2 over 2, which is 1. So the x-coordinate of my vertex is 1, and my axis of symmetry is x equals 1. So now that I know that piece of information... So I know my y-intercept, which is 0, 3. My axis of symmetry is the line x equals 1. And now my vertex, so my vertex has an ordered pair of 1, comma something. And so in order for me to figure that out, I need to take that 1 and plug it into my equation. So y equals 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3, and I can go ahead and solve that, 1 minus 2 minus 3, which is going to give me negative 4, and so the y coordinate of my vertex is negative 4. So there I have my vertex of 1 comma negative 4. So that's how I find all that information. I'm just using the information that I'm given. I'm using that a, b, and c, and finding my y-intercept, which I don't necessarily need to use. But, like I said, my focus was this x equals negative b over 2a. That's what I used to find those other two pieces of information. And then, so the question that I, I can ask myself is, how does this make graphing easy? So if I use these three pieces of information that I was given, you know, the first thing that I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at my vertex. My vertex is 1 comma negative 4. So I can go to 1 comma negative 4, and I can put, an, put a point there. Now, I know that my axis of symmetry is exactly through that, so which is x equals 1. So what I can do is I can just draw a dotted line through that point. So there's my vertex, there's my axis of symmetry. Now, what this tells me is that tells me that everything will reflect across this axis of symmetry. So what I can then do is I can use my y-intercept, which is 0, negative 3 here, 
and I can reflect a point across this line. So it's one unit away from the line, so another point is going to be right over here. So this point over here is 2 comma negative 3, and this point over here is 0 comma negative 3. And so the idea is that I can use those two pieces of information and say, okay, well, I know roughly that my graph is going to kind of look like this. And I only really need those three points in order to actually graph this parabola. Now, part of me would say that I need some more points maybe in this general area over here to kind of figure that out. And so what I could do is to help me shape this graph, I could pick a value of x. And I'm going to pick a value of x equals 3. I'm going to plug it into my formula, into my original equation up here. So we would have 3 squared minus 2 times 3 minus 3. That would give me 9 minus 6 minus 3, which coincidentally would be 0. So at 3, at positive 3, I have a 0. And so this would be 3 comma 0. So that's how I would find another ordered pair. And then I can reflect that, and if I look at this, this is 2 units away. So from my axis of symmetry, it's 2 units away. So if I go 2 units the other way, I get negative 2 over here. So negative 2 comma 0. And so I can start reflecting those points. So instead of just making five different points, what I've done is I've really only made one ordered pair to graph this function. And I actually graphed that pretty well, and I'm pretty proud of myself. But the idea is that we can use just a couple points and reflect them in order to make this graphing a lot easier. That's why we find the axis of symmetry, so that we can reflect points across it based on the number of units it is away from the axis of symmetry. And so that's going to be our task here. So we're going to graph this without a table. And so instead of using a table, I need to find my kind of easy pieces here. So my y-intercept, I just use my value of c. So my y-intercept is 0, 2, because it's just c. Now I need to find my axis of symmetry. So I'm going to say a, o, s. My axis of symmetry is a vertical line equation, which is going to be x equals, if we remember, negative b over 2a. So I plug that information in, a is negative 1, b is 4, and c is 2. So if I plug that information in, I get negative b, which would be negative 4, over 2 times negative 1, which would be negative 4 over negative 2, which gives me a positive 2 as my axis of symmetry. So with that information, if I go over here at x equals positive 2, I can start drawing my line. So that's my axis of symmetry there. Now I know that I have a y-intercept over here of 0, 2. And before I even found my vertex, I can actually just reflect this already. So here, I know that I have a point over here because if you notice, this is reflected across. Now I need to go find my vertex. I already know that x is equal to 2. And so I can plug in 2. So negative, so negative 2 squared plus 4 times 2 plus 2. Now this is going to be a little bit different than the other example that I had because the negative is actually on the outside of this. So I'm going to put 2 in parentheses and notice that the negative is on the outside. So when I actually evaluate the negative 4 plus 8 plus 2 instead of being positive for. Um, so I just need to be very careful with what my value is and when I plug it in. And so if I solve this, negative 4 plus 8 is positive 4 plus 2 more is 6. And so now I know I have a vertex, and I'll put this up here, I have a vertex at the ordered pair 2 comma positive 6. And so I can place that ordered pair for my vertex, and I'll put that in blue. And so we go 2 comma 6, and notice that my vertex is on my axis of symmetry, and that's exactly where it should be. So I should be expecting that point there. Now, if I look back at my original problem here, my coefficient was negative, so I know that this points down. These points are far enough away from each other that I don't feel that I need to um, have anything more to supplement this. And so what we can do is then we can just draw our curve. We can start from the vertex and go down for our end behavior. And then we can do that on this side too as well. And there, all of a sudden, I have just graphed a function without actually using a table of the values. The only thing that I calculated was this x and this y pair for my vertex, and that was it. 
And so from a similar piece of information, we can actually graph with only two values here. And so if you notice, I have a vertex of 0, 4, and I have a point of 1, negative 1. And so the way that I would do this is the first thing that I would do is I would graph the vertex. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that vertex and I'm going to put it on this graph, so 0, 4, uh, which is right here. And then the second thing that I'm going to do is make my axis of symmetry. If I make my axis of symmetry, then I can reflect as many points th as that I want. So the axis of symmetry goes right through the vertex. So it's just a vertical line right through the vertex. And then the third thing that I was going to do is graph and reflect points. So if I have any points, whether they are y-intercepts, whether they're just regular points, I can graph them and I can um, reflect them in order to get two ordered pairs. So the one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the point uh, 1, comma, negative 1. So 1, comma, negative 1 would be right here. And if I notice that this is only one unit away from my axis of symmetry, I can reflect it and I have it here. Now, based on this information, I already know that this points down because my vertex is either going to be a minimum or a maximum. And if that point is below those, they're just going to go in that direction. Um, and they're just going to go towards that point. So there, I just graphed with as minimal as information as you think that I could get. But I graphed the vertex, I made the axis of symmetry, and I reflected and actually got two points out of it. Um, so we can just graph parabolas with really low information, but as long as we look at our vertex, so find your vertex, find your axis of symmetry, and then we can reflect points. And that's all we got for today.